Hello and welcome to the TCF Morning Show. It is Thursday, December 12th. Uh, I am joined tonight by Pigoy at TCF Pigoy and Boomy at Boomy TCF. Uh, before we get into the show, we have to thank our sponsors, The Muddy Otter. Right here is a beautiful little mug they made for us. It has a TCF logo on there. Um, if you want to go to the website, themuddyotter.com, go check out some stuff. Last night they had a drop of stuff uh, that they had left over from a little sale they did. Uh, so go check that out. Go to their Twitter. And it's, I always say Twitter. Their Facebook and Instagram. Boomy has got their Instagram right there for you. Added all their nice little pottery that they make, some updates and stuff, uh, some videos of them making it. It is pottery and woodworking. It is Hannah and Mitch Prentice, and they are out of the Lake of the Ozark. So hit them up for some holiday gifts. If you're a little behind, like myself, on some gifts for family um they'll hopefully get it to you they'll try and get it to you before the holidays uh i know we we know how shipping can go sometimes uh it's a pain in the ass so uh like i said go on there uh get in contact with them and they will try their best for you uh but tonight boys we got a big night let's start off with a subject that's a little sore for me bulls hawks had the under uh 221 i think it was and Bulls damn near covered that by themselves. Yeah, that wasn't even close. That was ugly. Um, Bulls had 136, I think, by themselves. Yeah. So that was a, a nice little loser for myself. We also have the the Michigan money line, which we're watching Michigan Illinois right now. Me and Pigoy are. So we'll be giving you updates throughout the show on that. But Bulls, uh, an, another night at the United Center where there was less than expected. Uh, I think I saw like 15,000 a night. Uh, the other night there was 14,000 and that's where you're finally going to see some of the action go down where, uh, where you're going to maybe see the Reinsdorfs have to get involved because if you take money out of their pockets, that's where they're finally going to get mad. Uh, maybe they'll make some changes. Who knows? They probably won't. Uh, Jim Boylan just not getting the job done. But like I said, they won a night against a bad, bad Hawks team. Um, I think they're coming off a back to back, uh, after last night where they were in Miami and Trey Young kind of called game. With about a minute yeah. left, and then ended up, I think, Miami yeah. had like a 24-0 run. No surprise. 22 nothing run. No surprise that Jimmy Butler had to be the guy to point it out and tell everybody about it. Uh, that's just uh, Jimmy Butler. Just uh, surprising. Um, yeah, he is. But I mean, if I was on his shoes too, I probably would do the same thing. Uh, but well, they were up like six, I think, at the time. So that was a little surprising. Bulls, though, boys. What do you guys think of the Bulls? Uh, do you? Do you like how the United Center is kind of emptying out a little bit? I know that it will never happen with the Blackhawks. I think they'll always pull big crowds, but maybe this will maybe make some changes. What do you guys think? The only issue I have with it is like, yes, it's, it, it is what we want to see, maybe send a message. But at the end of the day, I don't think it's going to make that big of an impact because the Bulls make most of their money from corporate money, sponsorships and different things in the stadium. And obviously owning the rise source, owning the United Center helps a lot. Um, you know, it's going to take a long time, but it, you got to start somewhere uh, with the attendance going down to maybe get somebody's heads out of their rear end. Um, obviously, in the, in the quick run, it's not going to make the biggest difference because they only start caring uh, really when the corporate money starts, you know, slowing down. It's a good step, but we got a long way to go before, to, before maybe Jerry Reinsdorf finally realizes that the fans are, are unimpressed because the only way, like you said, to get to them is, is to attack their pocketbook. And it, it is, it's a small start. It is a very, very small start. Um, and it's going to take time, but you know, it's, that's what you got to do when, when your team isn't winning. That's why the Cubs were, were able to, you know, still the Cubs made money in, in years that they won like 60 games because people still went to the games. Um, and you, it's got to start somewhere. So it might be a long process, but, um, you know, it's, it's got to go from, from some point, and I think it might be now. Yeah, I, I, I think so too. It's, it's you got to start somewhere. Like to Zach's point about, um, like the Hawks will never have that problem because the Hawks games are just a better experience to go to than a Bulls game is. Like, you know, if you're gonna be like, hey, you want to go to a Bulls game? Be like, well, is it gonna be like thirty bucks? Because I'll go if, if it's gonna be, right. you know, there, there's a certain price point people have now with how bad the team is, and how bad everything about the bulls is where they just won't go but the hawks is just a it's just a better experience it's a big party when you go to a hawks game which is fun but um yeah i just i don't know the bulls are just in a, a world of hurt right now and it's not getting better which is good because then hopefully it'll get better but i mean 
You got to do something. I don't know if you uh, just saw the play on the Illinois game, but uh, that Kofi kid from Illinois about took out the ref there. He celebrated, and he did like a fist pump, and he turned around and just absolutely clocked the um, the Carlos ref. Like the the, Carlos the, Boozer? He uh, about knocked him out. Was it Carlos Boozer that punched a ref on accident? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah, he whacked, right him, right right where you whacked him in the nuts. Right where you don't want to be hit if you're a, a man. So, yeah, yeah that, that was always uh, the old – Carlos Boozer. He also kicked the it's kicked the ball, the kicked that ball way into the stands after he dunked it one time. Uh, he was yeah. a good character. Uh, but like you were saying about the Cubs, yeah, we got more Cubs drama today. Um, there was a report yeah. from Jesse Rogers that the Cubs and the Anthony Rizzo were not going to be talking extension. Uh, he pretty much said that it looks like he'll be. He didn't. He came back and said that he didn't mean it like that. But he says he's probably going to walk in two years. That is what he mm-hmm. said. That's called clickbait. That's why you want somebody to click on your article. Um, and he went at he went at Frederick a little bit, saying that that's not what you. He pretty much said, he pretty much said, yeah, he could walk in two years, or maybe he'll stick around. So you're trying to say, put yourself in this position where you're going to be right either way, which is not how it works. Yeah. And he he got all mad about it. He got all defensive about it. He was saying that. Oh, that's not what I meant. You literally wrote he is maybe go he'll probably be gone in two years. This is an extension. He has two years left. Who knows what's going to happen? Uh, Theo kind of yeah. came out and talked about it, but they have come out in the last few days and said that um, they're kind of maybe running low on I don't money. Uh, they always the well is running low. But yeah. I, I'm not too worried about. It. We still have him for two more years. Uh, the whole Chris Bryant trade stuff doesn't seem like it's going to happen, at least his winter meetings. Theo pretty much came out and said uh, it's not going to be a very – they're going to leave the winter meeting with most likely nothing happening, which is fine by me. I didn't think they were going to make really any moves anyways. And I, I, the whole trick Chris Bryant thing was probably just them trying to throw it out and see if anybody would give them a mega deal. Yeah. Like, look, Is anybody willing to give up their – three best and and clear up some cap space. And I feel like even with Rizzo, you know, it, it, we've talked about this the last two nights at nauseum, you know, like, yes, you have to follow these lead down these paths and see what people are willing to give up. And I'll be honest, I love Anthony Rizzo, but at the end of the day, if you can get a package for him, it, I'm okay. And even if he does walk away in two years, I think they'll be okay with it. Um, you know, but you have, you have to do your due diligence. And if, if that means not, you know, sitting down and discussing an extension right now while you're retooling things, then I'm okay with it. It's not a, everybody's acting like it's this big slap in the face. Anthony Rizzo's already taken a team friendly deal the first time, you know, there have been conversations about what's going to happen in two years. So just let it play out a little bit. Like you said, Zach, there's plenty of time. There's plenty of time. It's, it's literally like 700 plus days away. So everybody just chill the hell out for a minute. Yeah, it's one of those things. It's a business. People forget this is a business. Exactly. We're not. We're not here to have all of our favorite players on our team forever. If we were doing to do that, and maybe like you've seen a regression since 2016. Anyway, if he continues to regress for two years, do you want to strap a big contract to Anthony Rizzo? No, I love the guy, but you have to play this out a little bit. That's what I think they're doing to a year and see how he performs to see if he can still hit into his 30s. Like mm-hmm. I, I read, I don't know if you guys read Carl's thing on Barcelona today, but he did a big thing about why they didn't say anything in Rizzo and how he was kind of pissed about it. Which, like, I get that too because, like, if you're gonna make one move to to please the fans, extending Anthony Rizzo is probably the move you make this year. But, like, but like, but if you're but not like money, you, said, you don't make a move like, to please the fans. That's the thing. That's what you said. It's like it's like you're gonna wait from a baseball perspective. You're gonna wait and see how he performs this year to wait and see if he's worth X amount of dollars when he turns on the wrong side of 30. Well, yes. it to be this way. The, the guy sat out the last two years for multiple games because of back injuries. He's up in it. He's in his mm-hmm. 30s. I, I love Anthony Rizzo. He, he's one of my favorite players on the team. Oh, but yeah. But it doesn't mean that you just give him an extension because you want to please people. This isn't a please. This isn't exactly. please right. the fans. This is exactly. to win a championship. And Yeah, I think he's a, it's a wait and see kind of thing. And, you know, if he comes out and sucks next year, then – Guess what? You didn't earn your extension. Yeah, it, so. And you can you can reevaluate things at the trade deadline too. There's nothing exactly. strapping you to that. I mean, 
just just wait it out, people. And if you become a people pleasing organization, you're going to become a losing organization real fast. Yeah. And you know what? This is like it's like the, the perfect fucking storm for the last like three days because of all the Bryant trade rumors, the Contreras trade rumors, uh, Rizzo not getting extended. It's like it's just like I tweeted this out today from our accounts. Like the the two teams seemed like they couldn't be moving in completely opposite directions with like the Sox having you know you know all those young guys and all the money to spend. all the money to spend bright future x y and z and like just everybody hates each other this and that it's like I mean, they're going they'll figure it out cuz the like the talent is going to outweigh you know all the other bullshit but i mean I don't know. It, it's, I just think they're at two very different points as, in organization wise. I don't know if they're like two ships passing in the night, one's heading but, up, one's heading down. I think the Cubs are just in kind of like a retooling uh, phase. And, and you knew you, the, at some point, you know, your chickens are going to come home to roost. And, and you knew that coming in. Uh, when even we strapped up, you know, for, for Theo, what are we talking like six, seven years ago now? You know, you knew that this was coming. Um, but if there's no one else in baseball I trust to get us through this times, and it, it's going to take a little bit, but that's, you know, with the White, like you said, that's part of the business. With the White Sox, though, they've missed out on Rendon now. They've missed out on Cole. They've missed out on Strasburg. They've missed out on Wheeler. They've missed out on all these Harper, guys. Machado. It's one of those things. You, The biggest sign you have is Grundahl, which is a good sign. I'm not going to say that. You're going to have the, you're gonna have one of the best one. – you probably have the best one-two punch catching-wise in Major League Baseball. But – you also went out yesterday and got a right fielder, left fielder that may or may not even should start on opening day. Some fans don't want him to start on opening day. And it's it's one of those things I understand. That, yes, the White Sox are going to be decent next year, but you, you got to make some big signings still. You got to make a splash, man. I understand. Yes, you you want to pretend like yes, yeah, you're going to be you're going to be this you're the big team now. You're the team that's the one that's going to be in the hunt, but you got to make a big move. You got to get a big time pitcher. Yeah. You got to get a big time fielder. You got to get something. And so far, they've missed out on all of them. They gave Garrett Cole would... just as much money as they as the Yankees were going to give him. They missed out on him. Strasburg, uh, Wheeler, they tried to get all these guys, and they just missed the boat. I have a question. Now, if you're a free agent, like you, we all understand what the White Sox have to offer it from a roster standpoint. Are they a destination team for a free agent and Major League Baseball? No, I would say no, because because I mean sometimes the the stadium isn't full, whatever. But as a player, you probably do want to be on the team. They're young. They look like they're having fun. Uh, they're mm-hmm. they look like they're up and coming. So I wouldn't say that I would want to as a as a Cub fan. Yeah, we want to sit here and say no, we wouldn't want to be there. But I do think that uh, they ha- are becoming a spot to uh, want to play at, but. You gotta, you gotta get the guys uh, if, to prove me wrong. But so like, like their their roster is pretty good. Like right now is is it's it's pretty fucking good, and they got guys coming up that are gonna be really good too. But it's like you gotta get that big time. Where pitcher, you are, get that pitching staff? Yeah, order. where where are the guys that are gonna come in and save everything and push yeah, everything Giolito's, to the next level? You got your yeah. ace in Giolito right now. Kopech's coming back. Uh, Rodon's gonna be coming back. You're gonna have um, Dylan Cease at some point who did you struggled at the end of last year. Uh, There's a lot of sexy names in that roster. But the, Robert, the pitching Madrigal, is a lot of question Gilo. marks. Jesus the pitching Christ. is a lot of question got, marks. Got, Gilo, yeah, he proved himself yeah. last year, but he has to have to go through a whole other year. And uh, Because, yeah, he had one good year. He's got to prove it through two years. Um, like I said, last year he, he had an amazing year. But you got to keep proving it. And then, like I said, Kopech's a question mark coming off of Tommy John, Rodon off of Tommy John. With these guys, you're. I don't think Rodon's not even gonna be ready for the season. I don't think he'll be coming right, probably back sometime mm-hmm. in the middle of it. So they said the pitching is still a big question mark, especially with the. And he said the Cubs have question marks too on their pitching rotation. We pretty much got, uh, Lester, in Lester. I don't know if I trust that much this year. You're gonna have to because he's still there. But you Darvish, Kyle Hendricks, one. Quintana, um, and Lester are going to be probably your four. But other than that, it's going to be it's gonna be tough. Who starts opening day for the Cubs? Uh, you Darvish. Darvish. I would have to no say. No doubt yes. about it. I agree. I agree. I agree. I'd have to say. You, I'd hope you, Darvish. After the year he had, yeah, absolutely. Barring an injury or something weird happening in spring training, yeah, it's got to be Darvish. Unfortunately, we have to talk agree. about this. Hawk Harrelson gets in the Hall of Fame. He got uh, 
Here we um, go. Some broadcaster award that's going to get him into the Hall of Fame. Uh, like I said, I've never been a fan of him, but I think that's what he wants. No. He wants us to not be a fan of him. And pretty much he's going in as a, a White Sox announcer, and then he played for – I didn't know he played for like seven years or something like that. Um, he, if he was, if he was the, on the other side of town, I'd probably like him with the fire he had, and he always hated the Cubs. Always hated the Cubs, and he made it very, very known. And like I said, people were getting mad oh, at yeah. me on Twitter today, but it's what he likes. He likes. He probably loves that we don't like him. He loves the fire that he makes us have yeah. uh, over him. So Hawk Harrelson, you know, he loves Stern Hawk Harrelson in the Hall of Fame. Good for him. A bit more. Good oh, for him. Man. Boys, Garrett Cole was it nine years, three hundred? Got the bag. Three hundred. Three hundred forty-one million. That's insane. Holy That's fuck. insane. That is. He had a good year this year. Kind of got. That's what they call F U money. Uh, my favorite video is the Kyle Schwarber home run. He hit off of him in the wild card <laughs> game. That was beautiful. Uh, always makes me. That was sick. making us rounds on Cubs really Twitter today. That was I don't hate fun. to be this guy, but is he going to be able to can be consistent for at least two to three more years at what he is? I don't think so. I think he's going to have a drop off this year, and he'll slowly start to drop off over the next nine seasons nine like, seasons is what they have him for do people understand how long that is in baseball terms for a pitcher you know, long, you know how hard it is for pitchers to stay healthy for nine seasons oh no but it's guys, damn near impossible but like you don't think they're not i mean obviously they paid him but like you know put the quotation marks around they're not paying him for the next nine years or paying for the next like four or five years yeah he's getting 32 mil yeah, per yeah. year pretty much right that's a lot of money but i know they're yeah, yeah. 36 man. million yeah, it's they're going to pay him million? for that. That's what I oh, thought. I I did right, a right. Ma- quick math calculation this morning. I thought it was 36. Illinois with math the win. numbers. Gosh darn it. Illinois. Yeah. That's, so- That's the – so we had the, the one seed lose last night in Louisville, the four seed lost with Maryland, and the five seed lose with Michigan. And, and then we said uh, Rondon, Rondon got signed tonight by the Angels. Uh, mm-hmm. Joe Seven Madden. years, 245. That's big for Joe Madden. Joe I mean, Madden. His, his lineup next year is going to have Mike Trout, the best player in the game, Shohei Otani, one of the best up-and-coming players, and he Anthony Rendell, healthy. one of the best hitting Jeez. infielders Otani, in the game. Otani needs to stay healthy for a full year. It's been tough for him. Yeah, I mean, he's only been around for two years. I know. So. I'm just saying he's, he was hurt for a lot of this year. Um and I just think that he needs to pick one or the other. I don't think he should be pitching. I don't think he really – he didn't pitch at least at the end of last year. I think he should just stick to the field because that's just a lot of work for a guy. Um, they still got Pujols too, which is all – Pujols is an example of the long-term contract. Oh, my God, I forgot about this him. This contract yeah. is, not, is, never going to, is never going to be as good as it looks right now, ever. Nine years? Do you think he's going to be good? They knew that going nine into it. Everybody knew that going into it. I understand that, but still, that was a lot of money. That was that was a a mega contract then because that was right. unprecedented then. But we talked earlier about you know chickens coming home to roost. I mean that that's what's happening in the pool host contract. Everybody kind of knew when it went in like this is going to be really bad in ten years, and, and well, you're seeing it come to fruition. Fan, but hey, if he can if he can be a good leader in the veteran role this year, I think the Angels are are going to be tough. You know you, the the AL West is is not uh, obviously the Astros, but there's going to be a wild card spot and. and with the way baseball turns around, you never know what can happen with the Angels. They're, well, yeah, they're, they're not, becoming they're not uh, cheating, so they're not the Astros. Uh, like I said, maybe Garrett Cole's not going to have as much an advantage now if he's not knowing what uh, all this stuff that's going on. Here. Yeah, he's exactly. not going to have the advantage of everybody. A lot of inside information. Down yeah, there, but um, also with the whole contract stuff with this thing, you got to look at Scott Boris is Chris Bryant's agent. And that uh, is going to be scary in the next two he's years. A, he's a scary um, motherfucker. He, he's getting – I mean, he is running baseball right now. He is getting the mega contracts. He's And he, Chris Bryant's going to want a mega contract like that. And I, I love Chris Bryant. But nine years, whatever, hundred millions of dollars is going to be scary to give to anybody. You look at the Astros. They're looking yeah. to get rid of some of their good players because of stuff like that. It's just the name of the game. I understand that we, we want to love Chris Bryant. We want to be on our team forever. But that's just not going to happen for any player. It's just you can't you can't fall in love with guys like that. You got to – you gotta. my thing, I tweeted this out today. If Nicholas Castellanos goes to the White Sox, that will break my heart. It will break me. That will, I want I, – I need Nicholas Castellanos back on this team. He is the heartbeat that we need. He's the, I, I love the guy. I love the guy. 
He's just, he's just a he's a he's just fucking he's a winner. He knows he's a professional. It. He knows what he has to do every single day. He is a a pros pro. The the biggest cliche of all time. He is a professional's professional, and, and it's, you show it every day. Okay, let's get into Z Lil is bad at gambling. Uh, if we want to get into a little oh, bit I'm of this, right with you, so. it's not breaking news though. People have known this hey, for a early, long time. Uh, early season conference games in the Big Ten. Home teams are ten and zero this season. 10 and 0 this season. Yeah. That's something I wish yeah. I would have known before this game. Um, I also, think that <laughs> I also had the, I one last the Bulls uh, under 221. Um, the Bulls almost scored it by themselves. Uh, they scored 130 they scored like something points. Uh, unbelievable night from a team who usually stinks at offense. Um, yeah, it just not a good night to be Z little gambling wise. It just stinks. Uh, Boomy, <laughs> you got a wacky web story for us tonight. Yeah, does a bear crap in the woods? You're darn right. I got a web story for us. Our web story today comes from the state of Maine, where a man who was a kind of a paranoid uh, gentleman uh, booby trapped his ho- his home's front door to be fitted with a device that shot a handgun to anyone attempting to break in the door. Um, when you do things like that, you should probably remember where you put such handgun and what booby trap you set, because. Uh, this idiot shot and killed himself with his own booby trap. Oh, I did see um, that. Yeah. Van Buren, Maine, were called to reports of a man being shot early evening on uh, last Thursday. Uh, the victim called 911 and reported he had been hit by a weapon. And as they got there, the accompanying paramedics found the man injured in his home, carrying out an investigation. They found that the front door of the house had been fitted with a device to shoot a handgun at anyone attempting to open the door. Uh, so this dummy set, uh, I hate to speak ill of the dead, but this dummy set up a booby trap that he then forgot and it Maybe killed we him. just don't do that. Just stop. Well, just don't do just that. Just don't booby trap they, call, they have home security yes. for a reason. Just call like yeah, get a ring doorbell. Cause. Yeah, get a door, get some cameras or a doorbell or something. But you don't don't auto load a gun to shoot at something when you don't yeah. know it's there. That'd be like I, let that be the lesson, I, guys. Imagine being, the, the, imagine being the cops are like we have to like investigate this. Oh wait, it was his own <laughs> own fault. <laughs> well, he they had to himself. like send in. They had to like send in a special team because they didn't know how much more of the house was booby trapped because they were afraid to like yeah, walk I, in the I, house and have guns. I don't think you would, wouldn't Throws trust this the guy. shit flying everywhere. You don't trust this guy. No, no. So yeah, just what, you're gonna if you want to keep story. your house safe, just do it the right way by having like home security or whatever that kind of stuff is instead of. And this guy well, lived in like rural Maine. Like, are they going through like a horrible? Maine? Isn't Maine like this you know, one of the safest places? You would yeah, think. I yeah. Guess. Never yeah, been. Probably. I would imagine a little bit hey, of paranoia. Speaking since of maybe Maine, he had a car broken into. Speaking of know. Maine, that is where Mitch and Hannah Prentice went for their little honeymoon. So shout out to oh. Mitch, shout out to them. Uh, like I said, the Muddy Otter, oh, oh, right here. The Muddy Otter. They made this little mug for us here. That's his typical Chicago fans. Beautiful little logo on it. Uh, if you want to check out their stuff, go to themoneyotter.com, Instagram the Muddy Otter, and. On Facebook, the Money Otter. Just check out some of their stuff. They got videos. They got all their stuff they put up. They had a new uh, new batch of stuff go on the other day. So go check out sets for some holiday gifts. Like I said, if you're behind like me on gifts, go <laughs> check them out. Um, they will. Like I said you got about whew, boys. We got two weeks till Christmas. Holy shit! It's, it's yeah, not looking not looking good for me. Mm, not looking good for me either. Holy cow! Did not notice that. Two weeks from today. Yeah, two oh. weeks from today is. Christmas. That's insane. Amazon Prime's gonna be getting a little work. Yeah, absolutely. Speaking of that, I got myself a present today. <laughs> so maybe I should start working on other stuff. But I do that like every week. Thank you to Pigoy at TCF Pigoy, Boomy at Boomy TCF for joining the show tonight. Uh, you can follow the main page at typical underscore Chicago on Instagram at typical Chicago fans and Facebook is typical Chicago fans. Check out the podcast. We always put this on the podcast form too. Uh, go check that out on Apple, Spotify, Spreaker. Boomy, you got some? Sorry about yesterday, guys. Our video fell through, so we didn't release anything. We did record, uh, but you know we just had some issues, so that's why. Uh, for anyone asking, our our video from yesterday the did millions, not get posted. The millions um, and millions who were wondering where we were. Yeah, DMs were just blowing up. They were, they were like, "Where are you guys at? Yeah. Where are you guys at?" Sorry, uh, technical difficulties, and we're we're back tonight. So uh, this is the end of the week for us. Um, the TCF morning show 
Thursday, December 12th. Go check out the podcast. We got a new typical Chicago fans out with White Sox Dave. We talk about the Bears being in the hunt still. And we talk about the Cubs a little bit on there. But go check that out. Episode 57 of Typical Chicago Fans. We love you all. Like come, come Monday, it'll be a really good day and a really sad day for one of you two. Yeah, on the morning show. That is true. Bears, Packers, Probably Sunday. Good day for me. Uh, we might be doing some uh, something with it. But either way, it's going to be a good day for me. We're going to the playoffs either way. We'll see. But like you said, uh, Bears, Packers, <laughs> Sunday should be fun for all. Uh, yeah. Hopefully the Vikings lose and we need the Rams to lose too because uh, we're by, we got about 2% chance, 3% chance right now. So even if – I think if, if the Bears win – the Vikings lose, and I think maybe the Rams lose. There's like a 12% chance. So we just hey, got to win. Win, baby, win. And then we, even if we beat baby the Packers, win. we get the Chiefs the next week. So that'll be fun. <laughs> Good Patrick luck. Mahomes and his, baby Patrick win. Mahomes and his brother will be at uh, Soldier Field yeah. dancing. dancing right all over. That, oh, I was getting, uh, I, I, that was weird fuckers. I don't mean to keep going, but if you're – you've got to be smarter than that. You gotta understand yeah. who you're cheering against. I mean, I understand you beat them, but you didn't eliminate them from the playoffs. You might be back there in about three or four weeks playing them in the playoffs. Yeah, the, you're, that's you're not playing the Chargers. That's a God's dangerous sake. thing to do by da- trying to dance on the grave of the pack on the of the Patriots. That's, that's not a one one bear. You but don't if you uh, want to look at the stats, um, Tom Brady and. Mitch Trubisky, week four. Since week four, Mitch Trubisky's had better stats. Just keep that in your – Shut up. Just keep looking at that. Here we go. Um, <laughs> but peace. We love you all. All right, let's go.